Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the uh, improvements we've made to GoIPFS in the 0 0.5 release. This is probably one of the largest releases we've cut. Uh, not the most breaking. That was probably 0.4. Uh, uh, actually, not very breaking at all. Uh, but it definitely has the most like large-scale protocol improvements, or at least the most man hours put into it. Um, OK. Uh, first up, we've made a bunch of change or improvements to contract routing. Uh, contract routing is uh, um, the logic that this has around like announcing content to the network and then finding content in the network. Uh, the main thing we use for this is something called the DHT, distributed hash table. Um, we've made a bunch of improvements here to massively increase the performance and reduce some overhead uh, connection forming and stuff like that. Uh, so one big improvement here was cleaning up the DHT. Uh, in this release, we're using a tool we call AutoNet. Uh, to determine, or knows will use this tool to determine if they are publicly reachable, and if they are not publicly reachable, they will like drop off the DHT. They'll still be able to use the DHT. They just won't like ask other peers to give them or to send queries their way uh, because no one can actually reach them. Uh, in the previous DHT, what happened is peers would join the network, um, uh, and then other peers would start routing queries their way, but these these peers were not reachable. Um, so like ninety five to ninety nine percent of queries would just fail or time out because you couldn't actually reach the peer you're, you're trying to reach. Um, so uh, in addition to this, we've also uh, improved the routing table management quite a bit. Um, in previous releases, if you disconnected from a peer, you would sort of forget they existed, or at least you're moving the routing table. Uh, for context here, the routing table is kind of like instead of fingers into the network for routing around the network and finding the content you're looking for, um, or like it, it allows you to like jump across the network closer and closer and closer to content. Uh, but if you don't properly maintain these tables, it means that like a, a query that would normally like sort of like uh, take uh, a logarithm size of the network time to complete could take like linear in size network time to complete. Like you'd have to like, walk around the network in a ring. Um, uh, so yeah, we've massively uh, improved uh, routing table maintenance such that like query time should actually be logarithmic in the size of the network. Uh, these two, unfortunately, these two features here um, will only really benefit users once the network upgrades. Uh, so please, please, please upgrade your nodes and tell your friends to upgrade your nodes. Uh, as people upgrade, uh, uh, the entire network should be faster. Uh, finally, uh, we improve the lookup algorithm. Uh, this will actually uh, help nodes who are upgrading now, even when the rest of the network has not upgraded. Uh, where basically, like, the, the previous kind of logic we had. Um, we like, sort of keep on searching and searching and searching and searching and searching, um, mostly because like we, we had these like poorly maintained routing tables and we had a bunch of undoubtable peers. So like you kind of get stuck in corners of the network and you have to like backtrack really far and then go back and search more and like keep on searching. Uh, we've made a bunch of improvements like how we handle parallelism in the routing table or sorry in, in the query logic. And because we've also improved the uh, the routing table logic, we've been able to sort of like be less pessimistic in our, our query logic. Um, this has led to a uh, three to four x reduction in uh, dials and a massive improvement in uh, like IPFS, uh, provide times. Uh, so how do we test this? Well, uh, this is actually a big problem for us. We're like, we want to make a bunch of changes to the DHT, but we can easily uh, test like query side changes. Like we can say, like, well, like, are we making like, are our queries to the network uh, completing in less time? Um, the problem is like it's it's really hard to test like. Uh, I like guess server side changes on the live network uh, because like we can't just tell everyone, hey, please upgrade immediately, or please like test this new thing. Um, so we built a testing system uh, called TestGround that allows us to make basically just arbitrary distributed systems tests. Uh, we've used this for BitSwap, now we use it for Gossip Sub, use it for uh, or we use it for the DHT. Um, this allows us to spin up like a thousand to two thousand nodes uh, in a virtualized environment uh, with realistic network latencies. Um, and actually say, like, hey, like, does this DHT work? Um, so these results are preliminary. Um, these are results from testing, so they're not going to match the real world. However, at the scales we are testing, uh, we are seeing the IPS provide times in the new DHT were 20 to 30 times faster than the old DHT. Again, this is in a testing environment. You're not going to see this in the real network. Uh, definitely not now, and you're probably not going to see it quite as good once the full network upgrades, but it'll start, a box, or start getting a lot closer to this. But the, the, the multiplier should be about accurate, uh, not the absolute provide times, though. Um, uh, the find times uh, got to be around like uh, two to six times faster. Um, and uh, the IPNS get times got around five times faster in the new logic. Uh, so yeah, 
made a, a lot of improvements there. Um, so does this actually show up in the neural network? Yes. Uh, so even though most of the network has been upgraded, we're already seeing massive improvements. Again, we're seeing uh, like in the upper left-hand corner here, you can see uh, that um, provide uh, like dials plus queries have gone down a lot. Well, the number of queries hasn't, but like the number of like, extraneous dials we're making to the network have massively reduced. This should reduce the chattiness of the network, the amount of bandwidth overhead, just the amount of like load on the network in general. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, um, you can see uh, the uh, a graph of like queries that complete. Um, you can see that basically you've just gone from like 60% uh, provide queries to like or, and um, uh, 95 or 90% 90 uh, find queries to 100% both sides. Uh, on the bo bottom left-hand corner, you can see the provide times, how they've basically gone from effectively, like, on the left-hand side, you're seeing they're actually timing out there. Those are the red lines are timeouts. Um, on the right, they're actually completing. Um, they take a while. Uh, this will get better as the network upgrades um, and as we make more improvements, but they're actually finishing, which is nice. Um, uh, and the content routing find times have been massively reduced. In terms of the actual like reduction in find times, um, the 50th percentile uh, has reduced from like eight seconds to around one second at this point, um, or one and a half seconds sometimes. Uh, the 90th percentile has reduced from like 40 something seconds to 10 to 14 seconds. Uh, these numbers are highly variable. They're like uh, I'm trying to average this out over like many many days. So in this case, I have like I guess a week of data at this point, um, and these are the numbers I'm seeing. Uh, these numbers will also get a lot better as the network upgrades, um, and we're making more improvements. Uh, but we're already like very happy with these numbers. Or sorry, we're not happy with these numbers. We are happy with the improvements we've made. We want to get much much better. Um, uh, but yeah, this is a start. Okay. Uh, the next big change we made in this really is, content, is in the uh, content exchange. This will have a large impact for uh, pinning services um, uh, because, uh, like, b uh, basically, like any wasted bandwidth um, in our content exchange protocols, like BitSwap, uh, costs money. Um, uh, and like, if, pinning, if uh, BitSwap is slow, people think, oh, well, IPFS is slow, and they don't want to use IPFS, and they don't want to use pinning services. Uh, so uh, we made a couple of very large improvements here. Um, one is in terms of like uh, time to fetch the actual performance. Um, we basically we've massively Im improved performance uh, for fetching from multiple peers. Um, uh, we're, we're like basically BitSwap is better at like sharing bandwidth and pulling from multiple sources at once and like actually getting the, the proper speed ups. Uh, in the past, like it would get some speed up when pulling from multiple peers, uh, but like not nearly as much. Um, you can look at this graph later. Uh, second of all, in terms of um, wasted or sort of duplicate blocks, we've basically gone to zero. That red line at the bottom is the new uh, bit swap. Uh, the blue lines are the old bit swap. Uh, you can see basically like as we're running these queries, we're just not seeing duplicate blocks. Now, um, when you start increasing the latency, uh, we do start to see some duplicate blocks because we hit some timeouts internally. Um, in the next release, uh, we've added a feature to like, better estimate these timeouts. So uh, you should see even fewer duplicate blocks. Um, but yeah, we've made a bunch of improvements here. Uh, graph sync. Okay, so uh, graph sync is this new fancy protocol that lets us request an entire DAG all at once instead of requesting each individual block. So a bit swap, like you say, I want this block, I want this block, I want this block. Um, but this means you end up a lot of round trips, and if you want to like stream a bunch of data all at once, graph sync will just let you like describe the subset of the data you want and pull it all in. Um, unfortunately, like uh, we haven't like. Because basically, we have a side of GraphSync that just does that, where it pulls all the data in and like spend, uh, spits the data out. But we have not completed the um, like the rest of the smarts around GraphSync, so they can actually like, pick which peers it wants to download from, split uh, requests across peers, resume requests, all that kind of stuff. So in this release, we don't have full GraphSync support. Instead, we have GraphSync server-side support. What this means is that uh, an IPFS node can uh, serve data over GraphSync to some other node, not necessarily IPFS, but some other libpdp node um, that uh, has GraphSync client-side support. So what does this mean for pinning services? Um, well, uh, if you want to speed up like fetching data um, uh, from people trying to pin data, uh, and you know their peer ID, uh, you can quite easily uh, build a tool that just like connects directly to that peer and they use GraphSync to suck up all the data. This is assuming the user has enabled this experiment. This is not enabled by default. We hope to enable it by default in a future release. Um, but assuming they've enabled it or you've told them to enable it, you can just suck up all the data using graph sync. Uh, if you want an example of this tool, there's an example in the GoFS repo in the tests. Um, uh, you can just read the code there. Uh, so yeah, we're hoping that eventually we'll have like full graph sync support, which should Im uh, improve performance of uh, data exchange and IPFS in general. 
not quite there yet, but we are at least made a pretty big step here. Okay, uh, next up, import and export. Uh, this is how you get data in and out of IPFS. I've made a couple improvements. Again, very important for pinning services. Um, uh, first up, uh, we've improved ad performance uh, on Badger specifically. Uh, so uh, Badger is like the next-gen data store we're trying to switch to. Uh, we've been slowly sort of digging through uh, uh, bugs and like regressions in it and like trying to slim down the list of issues we have. Um, we're almost there. We have a couple remaining issues. Uh, we're hoping to get this out in 0 0.6, the next release, as the like the stable uh, by default, um, or sorry, as like the, the by default data store. Um, however, in this release, we we're, we're saying okay, it's stable at least. Uh, so we're recommending that people try it out. Um, uh, if you look at the bottom right hand corner here, you can see the, the performance of Badger versus uh, FlightFS versus Badger in this release. Um, uh, Badger uh, in this release is now on par with, um, at least on a disk, is on par with like reading the file off the disk and then adding, or, uh, or sorry, it's on par with copying a file from one location on disk to another location on the disk, basically. Um, so it's not quite as fast as like fetching the data from the network and then writing to the disk because you, you, um, we're using some of the disk IO to read the data from the same disk. Uh, but for most users, if you're just trying to add data to IPFS, it should be just as fast to add data to IPFS as it is to copy a directory. Uh, yeah. Uh, second up, uh, we have uh, improved, or sorry, we've added some commands for importing and exporting DAGs, or uh, sorry, uh, IPLD DAGs. That is like entire directory trees or like arbitrary IPLD data structures. Um, uh, previously, to do this, like you have to like fetch the data out of IPFS into a, like, a set of directories and then re-import the data, or like pull out individual blocks and then re-add them, or like move around a data source like this. Uh, now you can just give IPFS a CID and just pull out this archive of like this entire like graph of data and then re-import it into IPFS. The cool part here for pinning services is like this is a great way like uh, if you need to get a bunch of data from a user, you can literally have them like run IPFS DAG export, uh, export to a hard drive, mail you the hard drive, and then you just import it to IPFS. Uh, that's probably like, the fastest way to move data around at this point in IPFS uh, or just in general on the internet because like shipping hard drives is faster than the internet. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, if you if you have users that just need to like give you a ton of data, um, this is an option. Uh, okay, finally, um, I have a bunch of uh, heads up uh, for like uh, people running IPFS and infrastructure. First up, um, we've enabled the service called Otternet by default. Otternet is again that service we're using to improve the DHT to allow nodes to uh, determine if they're dialable or not. Uh, the heads up here is that um, uh, nodes will now help other nodes determine if they're dialable by default. Um, if it's an issue, you can turn it off in the config. There's the documentation, the GoFS repo. Uh, but this is a very rate limited service. So we don't expect it to be problematic. But like if you, you don't want your node to like perform any extraneous dials, and, uh, then you could turn this off. Please don't, because you help, you're helping the network by leaving it on. Uh, but just heads up. Uh, second of all, uh, we switched to TLS as the default transport. Um, uh, this like will basically give us like uh, a better secure transport with better or uh, better understood uh, security properties. Uh, it's generally faster, actually, a lot faster uh, than uh, our previous uh, transport second uh, However, there's no open still support. We have an open issue for this. Um, uh, I believe there's still an open bounty on it. Um, uh, yeah, so like this does mean that like as people upgrade, you may see a, an increase in uh, CPU usage because open SSLs um, uh, or sorry. Uh, OpenSSL's RSA implementation is much, much better than Go's. Um, and Secchio has OpenSSL support. So like if you've been building open Secchio with OpenSSL support, uh, then like, yeah, you may see some more CPU usage uh, from TLS connections. Yeah, just, just a heads up. Uh, Subdomain gateways. Uh, you can read more about this, um, uh, I believe, in the blog at this point. Um, I'm not sure if we've published the blog post yet. Uh, but yeah, this lets us like uh, put the um, like the CID or the domain name or the IPNS key in the subdomain. So it gives every um, uh, IPFS site a, a, a separate origin. Um, uh, this is uh, like, yeah, this is just generally important for like running, writing dApps in IPFS. This affects um, uh, your infrastructure um, because like you may need to change how you run your gateway uh, to probably support subdomain origins. Uh, finally, we've made some improvements to the daemon. Uh, one, embedded system D support. Um, uh, uh, so like uh, we now support the system notification API and socket activation. This is useful if you're trying to like start IPFS automatically or like 
uh, order dependencies. Um, uh, and we've we made it so that you can serve the API over a domain socket for improved security. Uh, we've also, there's also uh, two uh, repo migrations in this release. They are very minor. Um, they're just moving some things around, like fixing some config uh, values. Uh, but just heads up, if you upgrade um, and you automatically migrate, your node will have to go and download the migrations yeah, on upgrade uh, to like make these small changes to the repo. Uh, so just plan for that. Um, and there's a ton more, but I am definitely out of time. So you can read over these slides later. Do I have time for questions? You do. If anyone has questions for Steven, stick them in the Q&A or in the chat. Your, your one question is, people want the link to your slides later. Uh, I can send that out. Uh, I also recommend that you read the release notes. Uh, they include everything here um, in, in more detail. Uh, the answer to that uh, TLS is encrypted on top of private swarms is yes. Uh, yeah, the underlying, so um, with a private swarm, uh, we'll encrypt the connection first with the, the swarm key, um, uh, then TLS will be like on top of that encryption, or sorry, I guess underneath that encryption. We'll encrypt the TLS and then we'll encrypt the swarm key. The question is, uh, can we disable TLS to avoid CPU usage? Uh, we do not have a flag to disable uh, TLS in this release uh, because we are planning on switching to uh, the, the TLS version. Uh, if you have not been manually compiling your nodes with uh, like bash uh, tags equals open SSL, um, you, will actually, you should actually notice a decrease in CPU usage. It's only if you've been explicitly compiling your nodes with open SSL support, this might happen. And this is only as nodes upgrade. The question from Cody is, what is some of the history behind Sekio versus TLS? Oh, um, that's complicated. I don't actually know a lot of it. Um, uh, I know that uh, we initially looked at using TLS, but uh, TLS was like so tied up with, um, uh, well, one, it, it, like, the original TLS protocols took many round trips. Second, I think took fewer, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, I need to check that. Um, second of all, like TLS was so tied up with the CI system. We wanted a system that was simpler, easy to understand, uh, and not tied up with the, the CI system. Uh, TLS went three, uh, makes a fair number of improvements here. Uh, it even technically supports like, uh, like dropping uh, certificate chains entirely. We don't do that for like um, better interoperability with other TLS stacks. Um, yeah, I, I, sorry, I don't know the full history there. I think a good summary. Then I think we can move on. <laughs>